All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I hope y'all doing all right. Staying strong and solid in these times that run. I hope that you're safe, protected, and blessed. I pray that your relationship with the Most High is getting better. I pray that you repent and get baptized and start a new life. And I hope that your life turns, turns for a good direction and that you can help people along the way as well. Now, in today's message, I want to discuss about the whoredom spirit, spiritual harlotry, spiritual fornication, um, the divine feminine, you know, the queen mother goddess energy and that, that mother goddess ener- uh, spirit, you know, because in these times that we're in, uh, feminism is like, is like at an all time high and the whole women empowerment movement and all this, you know, like divine feminine energy is really running rampant throughout social media and through pop culture, what have you. And when you look at the music industry, you kind of see how the most glorified artists today tend to be like women. Like you see women getting more glory and credit more than ever. And it's not, it's not coming from a misogyny place or what have you, but you see like the, the aura they try to set around it or the, the hype and how the media goes about it and the idol worship, the mother goddess worship, you know, things of that nature, whether it's the female athletes or whether it's female musicians. But um, spiritually, when you look beyond that, really what's going on is that they're really trying to uh, empower the woman and f- weaken the man. That's an agenda to uplift the woman and tear down the man, you know, attack masculinity, uh, men's manhood and exalt womanhood, exalt feminine energy, exalt the feminine divine. Right. Because on a spiritual level, what people don't understand is that is a mother goddess worship. That is a way of grooming people into the uh, mother goddess horn of uh, whore of Babylon. If you read the book of Revelation, it talks about how the horde of Babylon will be wearing a scarlet like outfit and what have you. And when you read the book of Revelations, and also if you ever saw that Super Bowl performance with Katy Perry, she symbolized that mother goddess spirit hard. She symbolized that whore of Babylon riding on the beast like energy hard. Um, but many female celebrities uh, tend to give off that type of energy, whether it's Beyonce or Madonna, uh, even Whitney Houston has done it. Um, you know, now it's like all about like Cardi B, Magda Stallion, like Nicki Minaj. Like you kind of see that mother goddess like energy hard. Uh, the spirit of Esther, the, the spirit of mother goddess Kali, you see that energy very hard throughout pop culture. And, um, what that does is it grooms people into um, accepting the Antichrist, the Mark of the Beast, the Whore of Babylon, things of that nature. And what it also does is it also influences and attacks little girls and influences them very hard and and attacks men also in, in the name of feminism. You know what I mean? So all those things are kind of tied and tied in together. And when you really um, connect the dots and see it through, read it the scriptures, and when you also see it through pop culture, it's more evident than ever. But um, that whoredom spirit, that harlot spirit, um, the liberation spirit, you know, that all of that is um, the most highest against all of that stuff. You know, the word talks about how um, serious being a whore is and being promiscuous and all those different things. But in today's society with social media and how people live their lives, You know, people just don't care. We normalize too much stuff. We're so desensitized to many things as well to a point where people are scared to call it out or hold people accountable or what have you. So a lot of times people just say nothing or people just have a one way lukewarm street about their approach to uh, feminism or the way a woman carries herself or what have you and this, that and and the other. Because most cases, a lot of women are also into like witchcraft and sorcery as well. A lot of women are against God, against the Bible, against standards like that, you know, things of that nature. So um, we just live in some weird, crazy times today. You get what I'm saying? So what I would like to do is just read some scriptures that talks about harlots and things of that nature and just go from there, okay? I know I kind of like rambled a bit about it, but it's it's kind of a lot. You can't just really talk about one way of it. There's a lot of different layers to all this stuff going on with the exaltation of female celebrities and the female voice and um, a lot of things being normalized and things being desensitized. And we live in a hypersexual society and an over-sexualized society as well and how women push these agendas and trends heavy through pop culture. So all those things are tied in together, but they really push that harlot spirit, that Babylonian uh, Jezebel spirit, okay? So I'm going to read some scriptures about it. 
and just go from there, okay? So here we go. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 29. Do not profane your daughter by making her a harlot, so that the land will not fall to harlotry, and the land become full of lewdness. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 25. Do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths. The book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 16. To deliver you from the strange woman, from the adulteress who flatters with her words. Okay. Also, um, with harlotry, um, there's the spiritual harlotry in it as well is that the Most High called Israel a harlot because Israel went against the Most High. They went against the Most High law, such the commandments. They started worshiping other gods and started spiritually fornicating, you know, giving their time and commitment to other gods and customs. That wasn't what the Most High laid out for us. So that was spiritual fornication, that was spiritual harlotry. Um, because Christ, the Most High, is the bridegroom and um, is the and we're the bride. Like Israel's the bride. You know, it's a ceremony, it's a covenant, it's an oath, it's a marriage, it's a relationship, it's a covenant. So we are the bridegroom. He is. Uh, we're, we're the bride. He's the bridegroom spiritually. So when you are unfaithful to the Lord, you're unfaithful to the law, that's the commandments. You're unfaithful to um, the way the Most High wants you to live. That's spiritual fornication. When you dive into witchcraft and worship other gods and goddesses, that's spiritual um, fornication, that's spiritual unfaithfulness, that's spiritual adultery, things of that nature. And the Old, Pre Old Testament pressed on that a lot of times, okay? So here we go. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 6 through 9. Then the Lord said to me in the days of Josiah the king, Have you seen what faithless Israel did? She went up on every high hill and under every green tree, and she was a harlot there. I thought after she has done all these things, she will return to me, but she did not return. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw that for all the adulteries of faith of faithless Israel, I had sent her away and given her a writ of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister, her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but she went and was a harlot also. Because of the lightness of her harlotry, she polluted the land and committed adultery with stones and trees. See, when you worship stones and trees and uh, wood and stone and others, all those other gods, that spiritual unfaithfulness, that spiritual fornication, that spiritual harlotry. And that was Israel's biggest problem, you know. This is why the new Israel, the new covenant, the new um, earth, new Jerusalem had to come be established because of what the forefathers and the old ones did. They messed it up. So we have to be the ones to be restored and fulfill prophecy and clean it up, okay? So let's see the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 18 you shall not bring the hire of a harlot or the wages of a dog into the house of the Lord your God for any votive offering for both of these are an abomination to the Lord God. All right. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 17 through 18 none of the daughters of Israel shall be a cult prostitute nor shall any of the sons of Israel be a cult prostitute you shall not bring the hire of a harlot or the wages of a dog into the house of the Lord your God. For any votive offering for both of these are an abomination to the Lord your God. So the Most High was very serious and critical about, um, you know, prostitution, lewdness, being a whore, being promiscuous. You know, like the Most High was really against those things hard, you know, because people back then and until this day are sexually undisciplined, sexually lawless, and just, you know, loose all over the place, have no self-control. And the Most High is really against that stuff hard. But what's also interesting is when back in that time period, when Israel used to go to war, they would use prostitutes to spy out the land. And they would use prostitutes to um, help Israel sneak into territories and win the battles or what have you. Like the, the harlots were kind of used as pawns. So they would like go into different lands and territories and nations and leave the gates and doors open Um you know, mate with one of the securities or strongmen over there. And that way Israel can invade and win the battles and the wars and what have you. So God used prostitutes and harlots and harlots to spy out the land. He used them as spies. And it was funny is also how Christ also was around Mary Magdalene, who was also a prostitute. And she has seven demons as well. She had multiple uh, bad spirits as well. So um, the moral of this is like, really, um, if you are a prostitute or a harlot or a whore or whatever, spiritually or physically, you could repent, be restored and be baptized and cleansed and start your life over for God um, and change your ways. You know what I mean? But a lot of people right now are going through a harlotry phase. They're really going through it hard. A lot of people are very sexually lawless today, you know, so we need to 
have more self-control and be more disciplined and stop being in the flesh so hard. You get what I'm saying? And TV shows, movies, music, um, we're so desensitized to so much things and we're so like just exposed to all this stuff through social media, what have you, that it numbs people to making things feel right or wrong. They don't even know how to feel about it. But um, the word of God always lets us know what's right or wrong. And the most high always lets us know what's good and not, you know. The word is a double-edged sword, so it always cuts deep, all right? So let's see. The book of Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 3. But come here, you sons of a sorceress, offsprings of an adulterer and a prostitute. You always see the connection between someone who does witchcraft, an adulterer, and prostitution. Those things are have strong connections, okay? Now let's see. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 7. Why should I pardon you? Your sons have forsaken me and sworn by those who are not gods. When I had fed them to the full, they committed adultery and trooped to the harlot's house. So the thing with Jeremiah, like Jeremiah was a prophet. He was like a very uh, isolated man, very lonely person. Many, many prophets were very to themselves. But Jeremiah was one who didn't have children or was married. So he definitely had like discipline and self-control and was always able to be in the right of judging harlots or what have you, you know, because prophets had the right to rebel against the things that people are doing and um, correct them and iron sharpens iron. But a lot of times prophets uh, dealt with a lot under, they dealt, they dealt with a lot of attacks because, you know, when you just a one prophet going against a multitude of people, I mean, <laughs> you know, that's a very challenging thing to put up with. But, you know, Jeremiah was hard against this stuff and always, preaching to Israel about that stuff, you know, and God would use Jeremiah to always send the most highest word. So let's see the book of Hosea chapter two, verse five, for their mother has played the harlot. She who conceived them has acted shamefully for she said, I will go after my lovers who gave me bread and my water, my wool and my flax and my oil and my drink. The book of Hosea chapter four, verse 12, my people consult their wooden idol and their diviner's wand informs them for a spirit of harlotry has led them astray and they have played the harlot departing from their god so you see ezekiel amos jeremiah hosea you know micah like they, these prophets were all there to rebel against these people okay they were like pressing them hard and you know trying to correct them but you know israel was stiff necked and hard-headed they didn't want to listen so that's why god punished them so hard they didn't want to turn from their ways they didn't want to repent from it the book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 5. Ohala played the harlot while she was mine, and she lusted after her lovers, after the Assyrians and her neighbors. So when you're going around with the other nations, when you worship what other people worship, you're playing a spiritual harlot because you're not staying faithful and committed to God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know. Now, let's see. The book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 14. As for those who swear by the guilt of Samaria, who say, as your God lives, O Dan, and as the way of Beersheba lives, they will fall and not rise again. The book of Micah, chapter 1, verse 7. All of her idols will be smashed. All of her earnings will be burned with fire. And all of her images I will make desolate. For she collected them from a harlot's earnings. And to the earnings of a harlot they will return. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 5 through 7. And on her forehead, a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered greatly. And the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. Hmm. Interesting. See how our book of Revelation talks about that, okay? The book of Jeremiah, chapter three, verse three. Therefore, the showers have been withheld and there has been no spring rain. Yet you had a harlot's forehead. You refused to be ashamed. Let's see what we have here. OK. The book of Proverbs, chapter nine, verse 14 through 18. She sits at the doorway of her house on a seat by the high place of the city, calling to those who pass by who are making their path straight. Whoever is naive, let them turn in here. And to him who lacks understanding, she says, stolen water is sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he does not know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of hell, the depths of Sheol. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 12. She is now in the streets, now in the squares and lurks by every corner. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 3. 
A man who loves wisdom makes his father glad, but he who keeps company with harlots wastes his wealth. Mm. The book of Amos, chapter 2, verse 7. These who plant, who pant after every very dust of the earth and on the head of the helpless also turn aside the way of the humble, and a man and his father resort to the same girl in order to profane my holy name. The book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 15 through 16. Otherwise, you might make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they would play the harlot with their gods and sacrifice to their gods, and someone might invite you to eat of his sacrifice. You might take some of his daughters and your sons, and his daughters might play the harlot with their daughters and might play with the harlot of their gods and cause your sons to also to play the harlot with their gods, see? So that's why you don't mix in with other nations and start worshiping their stuff, okay? Let's see. Okay. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 9. Also the daughter of any priest, if she profanes herself by harlotry, she profanes her father. She shall be burned with fire. So back in that time period in ancient times, all types of people used to get stoned to death and burnt to death and got killed for being a harlot, being a witch, um, cheating, like all types of different crimes and um, ill will, you know. So this is why Christ had to come. And, you know, because like back then people were super strict on the law, super, you know, critical and super violent. But Christ came in to handle things with love, compassion, grace, forgiveness and mercy. That's why Christ had to come. So, you know, that's what it is now. OK. So let's see what we have here. The book of Judges, chapter 11, verse 1. Now, Jephthah, the, 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 the Giladite, the Jalidite, was a valiant warrior, but he was the son of a harlot. And Jalid, Gilead was the father of Jephthah. The book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 1. Now, Samson went to Gaza, to Gaza and saw a harlot there and went into her. So as Samson, not only did he got caught with Delilah, who's also a harlot, but he also messed with other harlots as well. So um, Samson was a real, <laughs> like, he had his way, you know. But we all know Solomon was worse when it came to that, right? The book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 2. When the Lord, when the Lord first spoke to, through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take to yourself a wife of a harlot and have children of a harlot, for the land commits flagrant harlotry forsaken the Lord. So God commanded Hosea to actually take a harlot for himself and make a wife of her, which was kind of interesting. But I guess God was just teaching him a lesson example through that and showing his lessons through things like that. And he works in mysterious ways. So sometimes things like that go beyond your understanding or comprehension. Uh, let's see the book of Isaiah, chapter one, verse 21. How the faithful city has become a harlot, she who was full of justice, righteousness once logged in her, but now murderers. All right, now let's see. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 3. A man who loves wisdom makes his father glad, but he who keeps company with, company with harlots wastes his wealth. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 10. And behold, a woman comes to meet him, dressed as a harlot and a cunning heart. The book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 18. For her house sinks down to death, and her tracks lead to the dead. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 3. For the lips of an adulteress, adulteress drips honey, and smoother than oil is her speech. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 24. To keep you from the evil woman, from the strange woman, from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of an adulteress. So the Bible warns you about dealing with harlots and staying away from them and not getting caught up with entangled with them for the sad part a lot of brothers out here have been way too caught up with these types of women out here you see and they end up getting them pregnant they end up making them a baby mama they start having restraining order issues they start uh have a child support you know <laughs> that's what happens when you mess with the wrong women at times but just get caught up and have no discipline and whatnot so yeah, man, you know, prostitution, being a whore, harlot, spiritual fornication, all those things are connected. Unfaithfulness, lewdness, sexual promiscuity, all those things go hand in hand, and God is against those things. And the society promotes it harder and harder, and then it goes off on the children. They're trying to influence children, all the sexuality stuff, and it's wrong, you know, because children are 
innocent and pure and yet this world defiles them this world pollutes these children with all this sex and bad influence through pop culture so all in all let's repent let's pray for these children out here let's pray for all these people um and let's get rid of all these unclean spirits let's cast all of them out man you know and let's straighten people out and correct them all right yeah so that's it y'all that's the scriptures for this message and what I would like to do as we close out is give all the glory to the Most High of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and praise His only begotten Son who died for our sins, and give them all the glory and credit, and go from here. So here we go. He is the Adam, the Advocate, the Almighty, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. Amen. The Apostle of our profession, the Arm of the Lord, the Atonement Sacrifice for our sins, the Author and Finisher of our faith, the Author and Perfecter of our faith, the Author of life, the Author of salvation, the Beginning and the End the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessed and only potent, the blessed and only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, first born from the dead, first born of all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal, king of Israel, king of kings and lord of lords, king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the life of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, Ahaya, Shaya, Mahamashiach. Barakatha Shalom Shalom Yeshua, our righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man from heaven, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrifice, Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection of life, the revelation, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth. The Savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, son of the blessed, son of the most high God, source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone to build is rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine, the truth, the way, the way, the truth in life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word. Hallelujah. Amen. All praise to the Most High of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And praise His only begotten Son who died for our sins. We serve an awesome Creator, and we serve an amazing Savior and Son as well. We serve an awesome Christ, all right? So there you have it, people. That's the message. Let's stop being a harlot. Let's stop being for the streets. Let's stop being promiscuous. Let's have more self control and discipline, all right? And let's stop spiritual fornication. Stop spiritual adultery. And stop being spiritually unfaithful, okay? Stick to the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I pray to God that whoever lists this message, I pray that you get baptized, you start your life over for the most high. I pray that you repent, get baptized, and just have new beginnings, and you just keep on, stay being strong, and keep being wise as well. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.